Um, I've been at CERMEC, just so you get a perspective, all of six months now. Um, I, um, as a chief, a deputy chief operating officer, I don't want to take my boss's job yet, um, have seen that, absolutely. Uh, the access to services a, as an inmate are inclusive. Uh, by constitutional rights, our inmates, our patients, because they are patients, um, have access to things that my patients at Prieto don't. Uh, dental services specifically uh, reference. Um, at Prieto, we've struggled <clears throat> to provide dental services. We've advocated, we've done fundraising, we've done um, everything and anything possible. We still can't get dentists at Prieto because the resources aren't there. Um, my patients over at Cermac Health Services have dentists assigned to them. So if you have a tooth that has a problem, at county, currently the only thing they'll do is pull your tooth because that's the only thing we can do. At the county of Cook, at uh, Stroger Hospital, they'll do extractions. But at CERMEC, we'll do preventive. Uh, we'll cap that cavity, we'll do what it is, we'll do periodontal work, we'll do everything else that's out there. At Prieto, where I struggle and struggled on a regular basis to maintain our mammography services, it's an old analog unit. That means it's the film, it's a camera, you take pictures, you got a piece of film that you have to hold up to the light to be able to see. At CERMAC, I have digital imaging, which means it's computerized, it's digitized. You can see it, everybody can see it if they needed to. It gives an example as to, again, healthcare here in this country is not a right, uh, it's a privilege. Uh, unless you commit a crime and then go to jail, then it's a right. A lot of uh, the stuff that you're going to hear is anecdotal, but there's some validity to some of those anecdotes. Um, we have, for example, once you're admitted to the jail, uh, we do a, a screening, we do a full assessment, we determine what your health level is. And from that, we base what are the next steps. If you need to be seen by a primary care provider, we will set you up for an appointment. Based on that uh, primary care provider's assessment, if you need specialized uh, specialty services, we'll make sure you provide that. Frankly speaking, most of our clients at the jail are people of color. Uh, they're Afro-Americans, they're Latino, but they're of color. Uh, and this is, in a lot of cases, the only access point you have to healthcare. Here in this country, if you're really, really young, if you're pregnant, or if you're really, really old, are when you're going to be covered by some kind of government insurance. And it's not just because we're wonderful people, it's because we're protecting the rest of the community. We're going to immunize our kids so the rest of the kids don't get uh, sick. We're going to treat our pregnant women so the babies come out healthy and we don't have to provide treatments for a sick baby. And we're going to treat the old people because we are nice. I mean, other people don't treat the other countries don't treat the old folks uh, like we do. But if you're middle aged and, and in relative uh, a healthy status, there's generally nothing out there unless you pay for your own insurance. Insurance is incredibly expensive uh, and not all of us can afford it and more and more and more uh, employers aren't providing the coverage that they used to in the past. I'm privileged. I work for the County of Cook and frankly speaking one of the reasons that the County of Cook is so attractive is the health package that they offer. Uh, not everybody out there is in the same boat which is why now with the current economic status that we have, the current economic situation that we have, with the unemployment that we have, we see that this is a need. We see that if we don't have access to health care, we're impacted down the road. If you don't treat your situation now, if you don't treat your condition now, when you get older, you will be paying a lot of money. As a society, we will be paying a lot of money to treat the folks that are out there. So again, the, the, uh, the, the system the system uh, in, in correctional medicine kind of gives us a, a plan, kind of gives us a, a, a roadmap on how it can be done. Maybe not in the best environment, maybe not in the, uh, in the, uh, in the ideal situation, but it gives you how we can and maybe should be doing some of this stuff that's out there. Um, just to clarify, I didn't say the county system was working really, really well. The county system is working. Um, the county system is a government system that's in place, and it's one of the few models in this country that's actually uh, subsidized by your tax dollars. Not, uh, we're one of, the third, uh, one of the top three counties in the country 
and we're, if not the only remaining county that funds healthcare the way we do, uh, one of the last ones. Um, what drives this system is the ability to generate dollars via your taxes. And this is me personally. This is not me speaking for any entity. This is not me advocating for a position, but it's me just telling you what I think. Uh, we're short-sighted as a society sometimes. We don't want to pay that extra money now to deal with it later in time. That's me. Uh, we, we, we're short-sighted in that we don't really know the costs that are attributed to not dealing with our issues now. But that's the reality of what we have to deal with. Uh, I've been with the county long enough to know that we've gone from uh, a place where we have had 20 community clinics out there that have been decreased to 12. I have had the opportunity to work with our last uh, standing um, school-based clinic at Morton East, which was one of my clinics, and see how you impact that, where we had six before. So, the system is not perfect. The system doesn't do everything it's supposed to do. And again, because the funding isn't there. The County of Cook only allows itself to generate revenues, frankly speaking, from those that have third-party payers. Medicaid, Medicare, insurances. Uh, the vast majority of our patients don't have any and then therein lies the issue. Uh, do you charge those folks and what do you charge those folks? Other folks won't see you if you don't have insurance, it's not an emergent situation. If you're not direly sick, if you're not in a situation where it's life threatening, they'll say go to your primary care site. And if you don't have a primary care site, the, la the place of last recourse, the place of last resource is the County of Cook. We don't have that capacity. At Prieto, for example, I have a waiting period, generally, three months to be able to see a provider. And it's like the lottery. You want to get out there, you want to get that provider, and you want to see that patient. Prieto sees patients coming in the door. Prieto sees patients with appointments. Other of our sites are at capacity. Other of our sites can't. We, we as, uh, as a group, as a, as a society, have changed our focus from primary care, from community medicine, over a period of time to specialties. Uh, it's much, much more lucrative for you as a medical student to consider dermatology, where you don't have to deal with the life and death issues that are out there. You, you'll treat uh, dermatological issues, but it doesn't pay as well as a primary care uh, provider. As a primary care provider, again, I, I, I personally feel that it's driven by cause, it's driven by heart, it's driven by want to make a difference, uh, because you're clearly not in it for the money. Uh, you will make a reasonable living, uh, you will make a reasonable salary, but the impact you have is more than that. The impact you have is to be able to, at the community level, make an impact uh, that is going to be uh, far more uh, impacting than, than any other, well I shouldn't say any other specialists, than, than some of the other specialties that we have out there. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think our focus has been uh, for many, many years to deal with, and, and part of it is driven by the, the nature in which we run this business, because it is a business. Currently, it's a business. <clears throat> um, we rely on uh, our, our insurance carriers to provide, to provide, to approve, to make sure that we have the resources applicable and, and available for those, those folks that have. Uh, and as a group, uh, the medical field has uh, aggressively pushed to make sure that we have a way to make a living off those things. I think you're absolutely right. How do we focus? How do we switch the attention from dealing with the consequences rather than dealing with the issues that create those consequences? At the front line, at the community, at the, at the opportunity, at our schools, uh, where you have the kids, uh, where you're able to be able to give examples on how do you stop smoking, how do you prevent uh, teenage pregnancies, how do you prevent STDs. We have a, a, a nurse practitioner in Morton East, and I advocate for all of our mid-levels, our PAs, I advocate for PAs. We all have an opportunity, not only as providers, which is what I said earlier, but as allied health professionals in whatever capacity that we have to provide education, to provide direction, and to provide an opportunity for our patients to really see how we can change their lives. They can change their lives because we can't change it for them. They have to be able to understand and it, and it comes from all of us.
as a group having the same message. Prevention, prevention, prevention will ultimately make your quality of life better, your life expectancy longer, and it, it, it's at that level that we need to be able to do it. How do you do it? You know, that, that, that's a conversation that's out there. Uh, I can tell you from an outcome perspective, when you see that diabetic that was out of control when they first came into the clinic, and you see that person progressively get to a point where they're controlled and they're able to do things that they haven't done before, where they've gotten to lose weight, where their levels are under control, where their quality of life is better, that's fulfilling enough, but that, you can't attribute dollars to that. You can, long term, but right now, that's what feedback you get and that's some of the, some of the payment that you get back. I can tell you, our folks at Prieto, and almost to a person, do it because it's the right thing to do. Because all of our docs, all of our professionals there can go somewhere else and make more money. And it's not just about the money. It's, and I think that's the message. It just can't be monetarily driven as a career. Clearly it's a business, and that drives the business, the pharmaceuticals. Uh, when we do and we pay the amount of money we pay for our, for our, for our medication, um, because it's offered, when we, when we focus in on uh, treating ED versus curing diabetes, I mean, those are issues that we as a country have to take a look at. When you deal with your allergy medications, instead of dealing with other issues that you can deal with that are more impactive, I mean, those are the issues that we deal with. And, and you're absolutely right. You have different places pushing different ways. Uh, but I think individually, uh, focusing on what impact you have truly does make a difference. Absolutely. Um, we have different uh, entities that always do community assessments. They do uh, to determine the health of our communities. The Department of Public Health for the City of Chicago does that regularly. And you can check on their website and you can tell how sick we are, you can tell what we're doing, you can tell what we're not doing. Mortality rates, morbidity rates, all the stuff that's out there. And that's, that's a good basis to begin with. But I think principally what we need to do is to get out there uh, into the community, not only um, as providers, but as lay people. The health promoter over at Prieto, she's bilingual, she's bicultural, she's part of a grant, the REACH 2010 grant, which is uh, a grant that's out there to, to, to work with diabetes as, as a chronic illness. She has her, her, pulse, her hand on the pulse of the community. She can tell me better in certain cases, and my docs can tell me what's going out there. And like her, it's not always the people you typically think can give you a perspective on what's going out there. I think collaborating with organizations that don't necessarily only have health as their, their, their focus, with organizations that have uh, a feel on violence, for example, and not say the Violence Prevention Collaborative, can tell you. Yes, diabetes is an issue, but it's not the only issue you need to be dealing with. You need to deal with education or lack of education for our community because that attributes to the violence and ultimately that attributes to some of the other chronic illnesses that are out there. Uh, I think collaborating and looking at a person as a whole rather than a system, rather than an illness, will make it better for us and, and be able to positively impact the person as a whole and ultimately make us a healthier uh, organism. For the kids that are out there, I know you guys have to have questions. For the, for the high school students that are out there, it is an excellent opportunity uh, to have a career. This is one of the biggest employers in the country. Healthcare is. Uh, it's not just doctors, it's not just nurses, it's not just uh, that. You have radiologists that are out there. You have language speak pathologists that are out there. You have RNs of varying levels from a two year to a four year to a health advocate. You have radiology techs that do specialized radiologies, MRIs, CTs, regular films. You have phlebotomists that draw blood. You have lab techs that are able to work uh, the, the labs to determine specifically what's going on for people. It's a fulfilling career, and it's one that we should consider. Uh, and it's one that is fulfilling in that you do impact the person and fulfilling in that you have a career and you have a, a reasonable, uh, um, a reasonable uh, opportunity to continue being employed in that field. Uh, so don't, don't lose sight of that career path because it is an opportunity that's there. Um, questions, other questions, comments, concerns?
Uh, it depends. There's varying uh, RNs. You have associates programs that are out there, which is generally two-year degrees, and you have four-year degrees, bachelors, and then from there you can go on to to progress. Maybe our advanced practical nurse here can give us a little bit more. But there are varying levels. There's actually going to be a table on careers in the health professions. I'm more than happy to talk to anybody about the nurse. And a nurse, um, and, and excuse, sorry, docs, but I'm going to tell you, the nurse is one of the key team members when it comes to the provision of health services at the community sites. They're the ones that make sure they organize everything going in that respective clinic to make sure that the doc is able to do what they're supposed to, social workers supposed to be able to do what they're supposed to. They're, they're the ones that, you know, when they, when they park the airplanes, they're the ones that are making sure that everything's going where they're, where they're supposed to be going. So they're a key member of that team. Um, and frankly speaking, a lot of folks look at it and see how it's the cheapest way to get some stuff done. A nurse is a, a relatively good career, paid well, but from a perspective of, of having to pay out, sometimes it's a less expensive way of trying to get the job done. We at Prieto, for example, have uh, appointments set up for nurses to be able to determine what needs to happen if a person's high blood pressure, we need to take the pressure, what do we need to do? That nurse is the front person, the first person they do. That nurse, for example, if you come into a clinic, will assess you to see how, what, when needs to happen. If you don't know what's going on and you've had a fever for three days and you want to be seen by somebody, that nurse is going to be the gatekeeper. It's going to be that person that dictates where you're going to be. Uh, it happens in the emergency rooms. It happens in the clinics. Everybody has a triage type situation where they are able to take a look at those things. So it's an excellent career path, uh, and I suggest you look a little bit more into it. Um, you know, uh, like I said, I can talk for three hours and I just kind of get focused in on the right things and I'll be okay. Um, Little Village, I'll give you an example. It's, it's where I grew up. I've lived there most of my life. Not only, uh, not just all of it, but most of it. Uh, I did grow up in Inglewood, which is a different dynamic. I lived in Pilsen, which is a different dynamic. But Little Village is close to my heart uh, to the point where I come back and spend time there even though I don't necessarily live in the community. Um, you may not be familiar with this, but I'll tell you. Uh, as a community, you can't sit back and wait for people to give you. Sometimes that's never going to happen. Sometimes you're not going to get what you think you need to get because it won't. Um, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. If you get up and you say, this is what we need, somebody's going to say no. You don't need it. Somebody else needs it. Somebody else is more deserving. Somebody else is more worthy. Somebody else needs it more. In Little Village, one of the most densely populated communities in the Chicago metropolitan area, one of the youngest communities in the Chicago metropolitan area, had one high school, Farragut High School, which only serviced part of the community, the whole east side of the community, North Lawndale, Little Village. We needed a high school. The Chicago Public School System said, yeah, you need a high school, but we need to build Walter Payton first, we need to build Walt Disney first, we need to build everything else on the north side first. Our parents said, no, we need it now. No, you don't need it. Our parents stood up and said, we need it now. We demand it now. And we will go on a hunger strike until you commit to building a high school in Little Village. Therein lies the birth of the new high school that we have on Kildare and 31st. Little Village Lawndale High School was born directly of community activism community demanding, community not taking what other people were willing to give you. You do have some rights, we do have some rights, regardless of your immigration status, regardless of your socioeconomic status, regardless of your age, you do have some rights. And those rights won't come to you unless you advocate. Little Village, Pilsen, which is not too different, have that culture. As an immigrant community before us, the Eastern Europeans, the, uh, the, uh, the different immigrant groups that have come here have always, and I think will continue, to advocate for what is due us. Uh, education, I think, is key, because without education, you don't know, you don't have the opportunity to really think through and figure out some of the things that are out there, you do. I mean, we all have a basis for what's right, what's wrong, but unless we educate ourselves in a community, unless we put professionals out there like myself, to make sure that we're able to speak. And unless we coordinate that with our folks here, 
we're, we're, we're destined to not move forward. We are moving forward and we should continue to move forward. That's a good example of how we've uh, organized and, and have had a direct uh, uh, product from that organization. But excellent, excellent. And, and it's one of the premier high schools in the uh, Chicago Public School System. Uh, technologically, it's a beautiful building. Uh, it's it, wonderful programs that are out there. I still work closely with them with uh, my affiliation with Enlace of Chicago. Thank you. There's got to be more questions, guys. A los papás, uh, también si tiene pregunta, hablo español, soy bilingüe. Y puedo responder en español si gustan. Well, just a couple of comments in closing then. Um, we are all the community, uh, regardless of where you come from, regardless of uh, where you're going, you're all currently here. And community medicine has community as its basis. You all, we all impact our patients in health. Not looking at them as a system, not looking at them as a patient, but looking at them as a whole. Uh, we as social workers, we as nurses, we as allied health providers, we as parents, we as family members have a right to access health care, I believe, but we also have responsibilities with those rights. Uh, we, we have the responsibility of ensuring that we do the right things, that we look at what options are out there, that we look to quit smoking, that we look to live the right lifestyles. The tables next door uh, point us in a direction. Uh, we need to take that direction and we need to be part of that community to better our health and better ourselves and ultimately make us a better community. But th thank you.